Hello everybody and welcome to my how to mine obsidian tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys, obviously, how I mine obsidian and how I believe is the proper way to mine obsidian. But first, we're going to look at some water and lava physics and how water and lava behave which are key to understanding how my lava or my obsidian mining works as we see here this is how water works basically let me try that again if you put the source right on the ground it'll go one two three four five six seven blocks away from the source block here's how i like to understand how water works Let's say the source block is, uh, we'll call that the infinity. It's basically the source block. Here will be 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it goes that way on either side of the source block. So here we got 7. 7 splits off on all three of its sides to make six, six, six. And this is a six right here. So here we got another six. Six splits off to make five. This is a five right here. There's a five and here's a five. So there's a five. Here's a four. Here's a three. There's a two and these are ones. That's basically how the water works. So then, here, seven, six, six, five, four, three, two, one. The water goes seven blocks, and at the end we got ones. It doesn't go any further than that. Now, here's another type of water source that I want to show you guys. When water falls, the block that hits the ground acts as a source block, but isn't actually the source block. If I could get underneath there and try to collect the water from underneath the source block, I won't be able to collect it. Now, lava, whoop, the lava works exactly the same way, except it only goes three blocks away from its source. So here we've got three, two, one. Three, two, one. 3, 2, 1, and so on. So 3 makes 2, then the 2 makes 1. And the source thing works with lava as well. I could get under, If I can get underneath there, I wouldn't be able to collect the block right underneath the source block that's making all that. So now that we understand how basic physics of water and lava work, I want to check out some cobblestone generators. Now here we've got a source of water and if we just place the lava here it instantly makes obsidian. If a source block or any bit of water comes into contact with obsidian or comes into contact with lava it becomes obsidian. Now let me get another bucket of lava here. Here is a cobblestone generator, you know, very basic with a piston. If we stick a source block there, here we got the source block that isn't actually a source block. From now on, let's just call this the zero block. <clears throat> As we saw, the zero block didn't actually come into contact. It's right there, there's the zero block. We know that if the zero block hits something on the ground, it tries to make a seven block. It's only the seven blocks that become... It's only the seven or one, you know, one through seven blocks that become cobblestone if they come into contact with, wa with water. And here's basically how this works. Water flows. And... 
the seven block tries to go into the spot that the water is in, and it instantly becomes cobblestone. Alright. Now, let's go... Let's go over here. <laughs> Got lost there for a second. Now, as I was saying, the zero blocks cannot become obsidian or cobblestone, either one. So here I've got a setup to where they just, the zero blocks just fall down. They don't branch off and become other blocks. Now you hear the sound being made, but no cobblestone is being made. Even then, we've got no cobblestone. So the zero chunks cannot become cobblestone or obsidian. Now I've got one more final setup over here. And then we'll get down into the mine. This is just another example of how the zero block works in water. Now we see here, we've got zero blocks coming down and they're going to fall into the water but they're not making cobblestone on either side they're not it's not going to make cobblestone until it hits something on the ground and is able to change its or spread out now you see the zero block fell into a hole that i had already pre-dug so if i stick a block of dirt right where that hole is we'll get four cobblestone on either side as it tries to branch off and make seven blocks. So let's just test that now. There we go. Four cobblestone. That is basically how the zero block works. Now using that information we can effectively mine obsidian deep below the earth. So let's go into this hole I've dug over here and get to work. Alright, so here we've got some obsidian. Another, the way uh, lava forms below level 10, so here I've got F3 up, this is 12. This is 11, and this is 10. Lava forms in caves that are formed below level 10. Basically what I'm trying to say is, cave generation happens before lava is put into the caves. And we can use that to our advantage as well as we gather this obsidian. But we're not going to be gathering this obsidian. There's a larger pool over here that we're going to be gathering. And of course I'll speed it up. When you find a cave, and I'm on peaceful right now, so when you find a cave you want to make sure you got the darker parts either blocked up or lit up. I'm going to come down here, and we see we've got a very large cavern of lava. So we're going to... Now this source block is going to fill in all the way up to, this, to the one blocks. And it's going to turn all the lava into obsidian. And we can do the same here. The zero block of the water is spreading now. So we're just going to collect that. Light things up so you guys can see. And finish the job there. Now the water will tend to flow toward the lava because it's lower than the actual obsidian around it. Now after we've got the obsidian made, we want to open things up here so we've got room to work basically make the ceiling in the very least too high now to make sure 
We've got all the obsidian, you know, we just... Creepy music. We want to make sure that we've got the areas around the obsidian opened up. And if you find iron like this, you want to be very careful. You could also just drop water there to make sure that if, when you're gathering it, you don't lose any of it. Oh, I just lost my bucket. Water, there we go. Now I won't run out of water. <laughs> okay, then when you've gathered that up, make sure you block it back in. Any loose torches, you replace. And continue digging around. Making sure that there's no... Yeah, just like that. We want to make sure that there's none of that. So, real quickly. There we go. And now, you can start mining your obsidian. Now, you want to do that on every layer of obsidian that you mine. Oh, we didn't get this part here. There. I missed that. I want to be very careful. Alright, now to start mining the obsidian. Find your starting point. Dig down. Place the lava, or the water. And then start mining. Of course, you're going to need a diamond pickaxe to mine obsidian. Unless you want to punch it. Now the reason we got the water is so if there's lava right underneath the obsidian then it will instantly turn into a obsidian before the block we're mining falls. That's how fast water is. And we wanted to make sure we knew the distance water travels because especially with a large pool of obsidian like this we're going to want to make sure we don't lose track of what source or uh, what number of water we're at. So right now we should be at uh there's seven, six, five, this next one's four. And this next one here will be three. I'll speed these up. Three and this last one is one, and then after this, we'll have to change the position of the source block. Of course, you're going to have to mine all of the obsidian that will be touched by the current source block, or you can just change the source block. It's all up to you. Because, see, right now, this block can be mined. If I tried to mine this block, mine this block, and if there's lava underneath it, the water won't reach the lava in time. But it will reach this one in time because this is a two. And twos will always make ones on either side of them. This is a three right here. This is a three. Or that that this is a three right here. This will make a two. And then the two will make this a one. So it'll go out as far as this. And then these will just these are basically all fine right here. This is fine, this is fine. If you got your water source right there. Make sure you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that your source block is 8. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you remember that, then you'll be mining obsidian safely. And you won't be losing any. Now it doesn't appear that there's much lava underneath this pool. I'm disappointed. I'm going to keep mining here for a little bit and see what I can find. So here we've got a source block. We just made a seven. Then we're going to continue. Here's a tip. You can hold shift if you're on an SMP and you don't want to fall into lava. Because on SMP, your movement is client side. And if you're if you move too fast before the server can keep up, you will fall into the lava. And also, if you're holding shift, and your the block you're currently in is a zero block or is a one block, I mean, and you mine into a block that 
the lava is underneath and basically you don't want to do that <laughs> you could end up falling into the lava accidentally even if you do have shift on you won't be able to get out of that easily because the water is going to be pushing you into the lava and you're going to be shifting right on the edge of that lava it, it's not very nice now see here the water turned that into obsidian now when we're done with this top layer we're going to do the exact same thing to the layer below it and that's how you mine obsidian using this method you will convert all of the lava inside of this pool into obsidian into your inventory and you will get to the nether or do whatever you'd like now notice how I placed that water right there the block I'm mining now will become a six block there we go becomes a six block perfect and now we've got enough obsidian to visit the nether Oh. Do, do, do. Ah, redstone. Into the nether. Do, do, do. Ta da! I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.